Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Speaking of excitement, I'm very excited. Um, and, uh, you know, I... We've been, we've been looking to do this for a while, but yeah. we're, we're just we're persistently and consistently <laughs> blown away by this man's ability. I, I'm going to introduce him first, and I'm going to tell him uh, the story about how you guys told me he was uh, he was coming here. But uh, <laughs> he's won 23 awards from Modern Drummer Magazine, the second youngest person besides Neil Peart, yeah, uh, to be in, uh, inducted into the uh, Modern Drummer Hall of Fame. Uh, Dream Theater, Liquid Tension Experiment, Adrenaline Mob, so many different um, uh, uh, projects. To, I can't name them all. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Portnoy. Yeah! Hey, he's here this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How you doing, man? I'm hanging in there. What 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 have I gotten myself into here? <laughs> I thought I was just coming to do an interview, and this is like a full on battle scene that's going on here. <laughs> I know, with, with a, an audience, and I, I'm I'm. What have I What have I done here? Well, the first thing Mike said to me is, he goes, "Hey man, how you doing? You're going down." Bro. <laughs> and I hope I hope to God that you don't let up because Preston has become friends with uh, Sticks It In You. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Steel, Steel Panther. Panther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah Sticks had said that you know uh, he he. Heard Heard that you're a cool guy and that you'll probably take it easy on him, and I'm like, man, I, I really <laughs> wait a minute, wait, hold on. This has been. Just, I got to step into your for your defense here, Preston. Preston has never said this is a drum off. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you how this yeah. started, yeah. Mike. Put, explain I, the history. I, I st- the other day it was Wednesday. I stepped out into the green room to go get some coffee or something like that, and I come back in and I hear Casey and Steve talking in some <laughs> kind of code. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell are these guys talking about? They're they're talking about me, and they didn't want me to know about it. And then. Uh, Steve goes, should we just tell him? Casey goes, yeah. And he goes, by the way, you're having a drum off of Mike Portnoy on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and, I go, and I just go, no. <laughs> no. Th- this is not my idea. Uh, but and, and the way Steve explained it to me is he said, dude, imagine what a thrill that will be for you to be able to jam with somebody like that. And I pulled back and I'm like, you know what? Yes. How can I how can I pass up? An I mean, the, like the that? quest love experience. He, he played. We had quest love in, in, in here as well. And it, you could just see it. It's a joy it, to, to be with someone who's at the top of their game and, and he's going to enjoy it as well. Is he at the top of his game? <laughs> I'm well past my peak, so you, you have an advantage on me. Well, you know what, Mike, and, and we'll get to Adrenaline Mom and everything that you're promoting, which, by the way, the CD sounds awesome. Oh, thank you, we man. We listened to it this morning. Thank and, you. And the collaboration with Lizzie Hale. And what a great choice. Come undone, man. Love that song. That's a great yeah. song. Uh, but I, I, I realize that in, in looking up information about you, you and I are the same age. Uh, we have the same influences. I mean, you probably... Like me, had a boombox listening to, you know, uh, uh, permanent waves sitting yeah, yeah, next to totally. trying to play along to it. Uh, and, Let me try and. Uh, <laughs> I was able to. You, you weren't able to? <laughs> hey, I could play Natural Science. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, oh, it, I might be in trouble then. That was one of my favorite songs to play. No, I said I could. I can't anymore. <laughs> no question. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, Bonzo and, and, and all the greats you grew up playing along to. But at some point, you were you just a natural right off the bat? Did you pick it up right away? I was. I yeah. was never a heavy practitioner, to be honest with you. Wow. I mean, when I was when I was a kid, I practiced all the time because I was just so, you know, passionate about it. And I would practice for hours and hours and hours. But to be honest with you, the last 20 years or so, I just don't have time in my life to sit home and practice like I used to. So I, I think I definitely... Am more of a quote unquote natural. You know, I'm not one of those guys that s- studies technique and works on things. I'm I, I'm kind of like I just sit down and just go. You know, right, right. But but you're still able to do clinics and things like that. I mean, you you can explain what you're doing to people if you yeah. need to. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I went to Berkeley College of Music um, back in the mid '80s. That's a little fly by night school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That so, is, it's it's like Juilliard. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's difficult to get into. You have to audition and, and go through a, a big selection process. Yeah, right? but to be honest, it wasn't about, it wasn't uh, drumming stuff I focused on there. I was like more into, you know, sight singing and, and reading and arranging and theory music and theory. Yeah, yeah, all ear training, all that kind of stuff. Right. So that stuff kind of helped round me more as a, a writer and a producer and, you know, the other stuff I do beyond the drums. Okay. I mean, because you're, you, you have a, a multiple levels of talent. You do, you produce you write lyrics as well, and uh, what what other instruments do you play? I can't really play anything else well. I mean, I could pick up a bass or a guitar, you know, get around, noodle noodle a riff or here or there, or you know, uh, communicate an idea to you know somebody okay. else I'm working with. But I'm not really a good player on any other instrument, really. Okay. Who's who was the first person you, you talked about starting young? And you know, press asked the, the question. Uh, who was the first person that you looked to and said, "Okay, I'm, that's what I want to do." Um. 
Well, and then, who pushed you over the edge you know to, what to lock mo- onto it? Most people talk about when they saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, yeah. and and that was the, the the moment where they knew what they wanted to do. I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and I saw John, and he was standing, and Paul was standing, and George was standing. <laughs> but who's that guy in the back? He's getting to sit the whole time. That's the that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. I want to be the drummer so I could sit the whole time. Right. No, but the, the real answer is is Keith Moon. Keith, Keith Moon, Moon was was the uh, the first drummer where I saw. And I was like, that's what I want to do. That's the type of drummer I want to be. Because Keith was so animated and such a, per, such a personality behind the drums. You couldn't take your eyes off of him. Yeah. And when I saw The Kids Are All Right, the Who movie in, in 79, Great when I was movie. a kid, I, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be a drummer like that. I want to be just this, you know, this. Oh, hey, there he is on the screen. How, how'd they do that so quickly? Oh, we're, we're good. Suddenly, Keith Moon just popped up on the screen over there. <laughs> and, and Keith, for that time, looking at this picture, hit, that drum kit was enormous. I actually, I did a Who tribute a couple of years ago, and uh, I did a New York, L.A., and Chicago show. New York and L.A. was a smaller kit, the, the more Tommy era. Wait, but go back to that other one. The uh, the gig I played in Chicago, the guy that uh, promoted the show replicated that exact kit for me. Wow! It, yeah, I assume was, that's a, that's a, a ridiculously large kit. With correct? The timpanis and yeah. everything. No, no, no. His Mike's yeah. kit is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that kit right there is like for one the, of my cocktail kits. Yeah, for the time. <laughs> really? That was big. Kathy, you want how, how how many pieces would your largest drum kit have? About you think. Thirty-five. I've or, never counted. I don't it's, know. It's it's insane. How it's a dr- it's not a drum size. kit. It's a drum village. <laughs> 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 I love that. I have I have a story to tell about you. And I actually, the kid's not here. Who the, they, I thought he was going to be here. That the story's about. I went to the Rush uh, Snakes and Arrows uh, tour, and uh, we got meet and greet passes, and uh, we were we were getting ready to uh, to meet up with it with Alex and Getty. By the way, those guys do backstage better than anybody else. They've got it down to a size. And we were talking amongst. I was with some other industry people, and we had to wait a few minutes. And and we talked about how a lot of the backstage experiences hurry up and wait. And we got on the conversation about. Well, who would you wait, say, three or four hours to meet? I mean, to sit there in line and wait around and do nothing. And, and you know, like Mick Jagger and Bono and, and these names started coming up. Well, my friend's son was there and he goes, I think it'd be Mike Portnoy. Uh-huh. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah. And we got on a conversation about it. So we continue on. We moved on past that conversation. We're waiting in line to meet Rush. And I all of a sudden I hear Matt. That's his name. I hear him go, oh, my God. Oh, my God, there he is. That's him. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, that's Mike Portnoy right over there. We were just talking about you. And he didn't even have to wait. No, he didn't. Because I told him, I'm like, dude, go over and say hi. Did he? He sat there from, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm, I'm like, if you look back on this and you say, I could have gone over to say hi to him and I didn't do it, you're going to hate yourself. So just go over and say hi. He did. You took a picture of uh, it with him and you, and it was a, a very cool rock and roll experience well, for this kid. I, I, I had a, a, just a great of an experience that afternoon myself. You know, I, I was like a kid in a candy store because Neil invited me down to soundcheck that afternoon. Wow. So I hung out with Neil and got to play his kit and you know through the years oh. he and I have kind of become friends so but I can relate, you know. So th- you know, I'm glad I was able to make that kid's uh, afternoon, but I was having my own experience as well that afternoon. But now he's over you. He didn't show up today. <laughs> no, he's sick. He's sick, he's sick. man. Oh, Marilyn came back and man. she and he is so bummed out. But yeah, uh, he is, he's well, sick. I was, I was, I walked through the hallway because I did the stage announcement for that show. I got to, to you know, say uh, not coming up, uh, like coming up in just yeah. a couple minutes rush, you know. But um, I was walking through the hallway and I walked by the room where he had his practice kit set up and he was right. warming up and I, I could just I lingered around for about thirty seconds and listened <laughs> and I got the hell out of there. Because I know, you know, you don't want to cross Neil because he's a very serious man and he takes his business very seriously. Uh, but that was really, really cool. And uh, and he didn't, you know, he's the guy that as as a young kid listening to that, I was blown away by what that guy could do. And he shaped uh, what ended up being a pretty remedial drummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you seem you seem to take uh, ownership and, and, and embrace the fact that you're serving as an inspiration for a lot of drummers. And and. Uh, uh, it's it's not it's not lost on you. Have you have you met uh, have you met anybody who's achieved a level of success who's been inspired by you? I know you're relatively young still, but um, well, yeah. There's a, oh, there's Neil on the screen right now. This yeah. is amazing. Um, who, <laughs> it, it's always really really flattering to me when I meet up and coming drummers that cite me as an influence, and it also, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, it also makes me realize how you know. I guess how time is flying. Yeah, you yeah. Know? 
Um, but do you, do you see yourself in in a lot of uh, faces that come up to you? I mean, you know, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But you know, to to me, the biggest compliment is when I meet other drummers in other genres that cite me as an influence, like uh, wow. like Joey Jordison from Slipknot, and uh, you know. Chris Adler from Lamb of God. These guys are more like thrash drummers, and you know they'll tell me how they grew up listening to me and you know Dream Theater and stuff like that. And when I see, you know, it's one thing when I meet other drummers that are doing like progressive music and the genre I'm a part of, but when I meet people that are in other genres, and that to me is a, is a great compliment. I don't know. Well, I you know what, and and I was thinking about this very thing this morning when you're coming in is that I think that drummers are kind of <clears throat> unique in that regard in that we will listen to other genres because there are so many great drummers in different genres. Last night, as I was uh, you know digging up some some video of you, I kind of fell into like the YouTube hole where you just start yeah, going yeah, from yeah, video sure. to video to video, and then it's off to porn. And right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always ends up there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but on my way there, I stopped off in the jazz land, and I was looking like Peter Erskine and Steve Smith and all these other just amazing drummers. And I think that, that drummers are unique and that we will explore other things that, that are not our main focus of interest. You and know? I think drummers are also not very uh, competitive. They're, they're more inspired by other drummers. Like I do a lot of drum shows where there'll be, you know, guys from Terry Bozio to Steve Smith to Chad Smith or whatever, and everybody's just watching each other, and there's a lot of camaraderie, and everybody's inspired by each other. I've been to, you know, other situations like at the NAM show or whatever where the guitar players, you know, they'll turn their back. They don't want each other copying their, really? their licks and their riffs yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, the drum world, there's a lot of camaraderie, and, and yeah. everybody's just very, very open and sharing and inspired by each other. I think musicians have uh, something special in that um it never goes away. Like you think of like, you know, if you're doing it for the purest of reasons and you're doing it to like feed your soul, it never, ever goes away. We were watching a video yesterday of Buddy Rich and, he, and here he is at, you know, 60 whatever yeah. years old. And, and it was really, really special to watch. But then you think, all right, Peyton Manning, for instance. One of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Horrible at, drummer. At, at a certain point, <laughs> at a certain point, he's going to have to hang it up, and he's not going to be able to throw a touchdown pass anymore. That's right. You know. Well, well it's all about the evolution of of. Yeah, I guess you could say that the same same goes for sports and stuff like that as well. But I look at it like that with drumming. You know, um, there's you know, fifteen year old kids today that could probably drum circles around me and and that have technique that I would never even be able to touch. But it's all about the evolution. I mean, you know, if I look back to my influences, it started with Ringo and then Keith Moon and John Bonham and then Neil Peart. And as time went on, you know, musicians develop, music develop, drummers develop, and, and it's kind of an evolution. Then came the, the, you know, the metal drummers, you know, Metallica and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and then my, my place in the evolution was like around the 90s when I hit the scene and stuff like that. I was doing more of the progressive stuff. But, you know, in the 20 years since then, you know, the, the, the level of playing and technique in, in young drummers today, it's, it's unbelievable. And you go on YouTube and you'll see like, Literally, like eight year old kids playing, you know, my stuff, you know, that <laughs> yeah. I that I was like thirty years old when I recorded, and it's it's just unbelievable how the bar keeps rising and rising and rising. I saw a video on YouTube of a like a twelve year old kid who went to uh, the Blue Devils drum bugle corps uh, snare drum practice, and just from watching the Blue Devils on. YouTube, he had picked up one wow. of their entire routines. You know how difficult that yeah. stuff is? It's insane, the technique that they can do. So there are some really talented people that are getting a new way to showcase themselves, too. Yeah, totally. Uh, via the Internet. And you know what? Um, Someday some kids are going to be able to go to YouTube and see Preston Elliott and uh, and Mike Portnoy <laughs> have a major <laughs> That's drum right. I, I had to keep reminding Preston that this would, especially in this realm and, and, the, and the fanatic fan base for you, Mike, that th this would go viral, whatever video is generated here. So this will live uh, in... Uh, in either infamy or or be celebrated, but we'll we're going to generate some history here today. I think he's he's gonna he's gonna take me down. I got a horrible, yeah, so. I got a horrible feeling about this. <laughs> no, 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 my no, reputation no. is is about to completely go down the the toilet. <laughs> Let me here's here, this. I was trying to think of a way before we played to describe what level of drummer I am. And uh, so I I back in the day I Jeff Leopard. Uh, well, <laughs> back in the day I you know I played in a cover band, and that's when I was playing frequently and uh and then i got into radio and i moved into an apartment i couldn't play anymore you know i just didn't have a kit that i could play so uh here here's where i stand now it let's say you're at a wedding okay and uh, you're having a good time and all of a sudden uh during a break the the drummer falls down and he breaks his arm they still got a set left to go oh my god what are we gonna do 
I'm your man. All right, I'll step in. I'll finish the rest of the yeah. night. That's about the level of the drummer that I am. So I can I can handle certain situations, but I'm not. Uh, I've only, I've got a handful of little things in my bag of tricks, but that's it. Yeah, but you played with Steel Panther on stage. I did. Really? I nailed it. Too, and that was man. good. Cool. Yeah. Stick toss and everything. Well, you have a serious. Uh, advantage on me here because I I don't think I've ever been up this early. So <laughs> you have a real advantage. That, that is over true. Me. Well, yeah. Before we play, let's talk adrenaline mob here real quick. Okay. Uh, this is coming out next Tuesday, right? Yes. Officially. Um, this is a, a really aggressive, cool sounding album. Not quite as as uh, as progressive as as Dream Theater. It's a whole of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's more listenable to the average ear. I think is is the way I would put it. Because Dream Theater, that that stuff got. You really had to stick with it and had yeah. to enjoy that uh, that intense odd meter, you know, syncopated rhythm stuff. Uh, but this is this is really straight ahead. Tell us a little bit about uh, the guys in the band that, that you're with. It's um, uh, Russell Allen on vocals, who, who's uh, the singer in a band called Symphony X, which is also a very Dream Theater esque type of band. And then the guitar player is Mike Orlando, who's um, uh, I guess uh, a real unknown talent at this point, but this is definitely going to be, uh, you know, his 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 coming out party because uh, he's an unbelievable talent, uh, not only a great player but a great writer. And uh, so basically, it's the three of us on the album. And since the album was finished, we were joined by John Moyer of Disturbed on bass. Cool. Yeah. So it's the four of us, and the album comes out Tuesday, and uh, we have a show. In New York City on Monday night, which is a um, an album release party, and we're going to play the whole album from start to finish at the show. It's at the High Road Ballroom in New York on, on Monday night, and the album comes out Tuesday. And we're going to have a couple of pair of tickets for that event oh, cool. to give away in a little bit. How did Lizzie Hale get involved on this album? Well, we uh, we were doing this uh, this Duran Duran cover, Come Undone, and uh, we wanted a female voice in there. And I knew Lizzie from... Uh, when I was playing drums with Avenged Sevenfold in 2010, and uh, Avenged and Hailstorm were on the Uproar tour together, so I got to know Lizzie from doing that tour together. And when we needed a female vocalist, you know, it was it was a no brainer. Yeah, she can she can wail. Oh, she's amazing, and yeah. she just took this up a whole other level of intensity. Hearing her and and Russell Allen singing together, it's just amazing, amazing. Had you worked with any female singers before? Uh, no, I don't think so. Now that you mention it. I don't think so. I, I'm I love it when when rock chicks start to surface, you know, and and uh, really start to get some success, and then she's got that really just powerful. She's amazing voice. She's like uh, Mike Orlando, the guitar player, said this the other day, but she's like a female Russell Allen. Russell Allen, the singer from Adrenaline Mob, right. is just a beast of a singer with yeah. this with this huge voice and and power and lizzie is like the female version of that it's yeah. she could just sing anything and she's local too right yeah she, yeah. yeah 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 hey i want to ask about the the singer and there's a song in the album called feeling me and i uh, was i was kind of laughing at it. it was it's a funny song was uh -huh. it how did that song come about because well, he's you'll, really you'll never just, you'll, you'll, you'll never be able to play that track never, on this ever, station it's just him over and over again saying are you effing feeling me yeah um <laughs> It's 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 comical, but I mean, it's got balls to it as well. Was it? Were you guys just kind of messing around, or we were? It was a a, a riff that Mike had on guitar, and uh, this is one of the songs that kind of developed right at the end before we started the album. And uh, Russell just banged out. He was he was just feeling those lyrics. He uh -huh. was just all you, you know. I can't say it, but, yeah. Yeah. but he just belted them out. And he he did those vocals like in one take. Just put put a mic in front of him. And we were talking before about being a natural and how like I'm, I'm I don't practice much and I'm like kind of just a, a natural guy in the drums. Well, Russell's like that with vocals. He's not one of those prima donna you know rock star singers where he has to have his tea and warm up for, for right. two hours. He's just like put a mic in front of him, and let him go, let and it he go. just belts it out. And he did it that with a, these vocals. It was a lot of fun, and it to me, I, you know, I've never spent any time in a, in a recording studio, but it just seemed like you guys were having fun. You're yeah. like, you know, let's just mess around. This here. album yeah. is totally about fun. I mean, yeah. I you know, all the years of what I did with Dream Theater, which was, you know, very, very serious music, you know, a lot of intensity, a lot of, you know, um, you know, counting and odd time signatures and 12 minute songs. Adrenaline Mob is, is more about just, you know, just big riffs, grooves, you know, it's it's like the ACDC of, of <laughs> you know, of what I do, I which suppose. Which is not to so, say that there's not the, the spirit and the, un, you know, the undeniable sound that you get. In in it, well, but there's a lot yeah. of sh there's a lot of shredding and playing. Yeah. I mean, yep. the guitar player is amazing, and I'm I'm pulling out some stuff, you know, in, in Drumland. But th this it's all about the songs and just basically banging out four or five minute songs. Did you record it locally? 
Yeah, at Mike Orlando's studio in New York. Oh, in New York, okay. Because yeah. uh, if you don't know, people don't know, uh, Mike uh, Portnoy lives fairly close here. Yeah, like in, uh, in I'm, the a, area. I'm a, a new PA. Well, it's been about eight years. I, I, I've always lived in New York, but I've been in Pennsylvania for about eight years now. Why'd you choose this area? I was surprised to hear that you lived uh, out this way. I don't. I don't know. Um, yeah. Tasty cake. I lived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I lived in New York my whole life, and uh, me and my wife wanted to move out and you know get some land and raise our kids in a nice normal place. And uh, we started looking in Jersey. And next thing we knew, we crossed the border and we were in Pennsylvania. And here we are. Nice. Cool. I love the artwork on the cover of uh, Omerto. Uh, who designed that? Um. You know, I, I don't, I don't remember the guy's name, but he's done. Charles he's done, Schultz. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's done One uh, of his darker periods. Is that Gary Larson from the Far Side? <laughs> he's done uh, some Black Label Society s- stuff, and uh, basically, we have this uh, this kind of mascot, the Bone Daddy, and uh, you know, he's a skeleton, a mafia skeleton. And, uh, you know, it's the first time I've ever had anything like this on one of my album covers. Usually Dream Theater album covers are all, like, cerebral and, you know, right, they'll yeah. have... Uh, Salador, the Salvador uh, d- Dolly. Totally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things that you have no idea what, what's going yeah. on. Is that clock melting or what is that? <laughs> <laughs> but this was this was Russell's idea. He wanted to have this mascot the way, like, Iron Maiden or Megadeth have theirs. That's and cool. I was like, I don't know, man. That's like, <laughs> we might get torn apart for that. But <laughs> but I guess, you know, what people, the hell? people are digging it, man. Yeah. You know, can't go wrong with a, a big mafia skeleton guy, right? I don't think so. (laughs) Pressing enough progression. uh, All right, all right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Casey's telling me we need to move along. In a little bit, we're going to play Indifferent, uh, which is going to be the first release from Adrenaline Mob. But Casey's saying... Let's get to it, man. Yeah. Dude, 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 my Let's heart go. is pounding <laughs> through my oh, chest man. right now, dude. All right. You want to Wait, we're getting behind the drums? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna play the little I, one over I, here. Like I said, I don't think I've ever played drums at this time of the morning. So you <laughs> really first, have yeah. something on me. Oh, Come on, Francis. I have to pee, man. I really gotta pee. Hey, 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 hey. All right, he's walking around. You also have the advantage I've never sat behind these drums. I have no idea. You You've probably been warming up on your kit. A little bit. A little bit. Like, that'll make a difference. <laughs> was there a train whistle I, in the there background? There is a train in yeah, the that was, that was, I think I... My phone. My oh, okay. Phone. Your phone is a train? I just heard a, a ghost whistle from yeah. a train. All right, Find me. And a microphone over there for you. All right. Dude, I really got to take a leak. That was me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted everybody to know that. No, that was Mike. Uh, I, my, my drum kit is a little bit, uh, it's a little higher uh, pitch, so you'll be able to tell the difference between. Uh, Let me hear yours. All right. And this is mine. All right. Game I, over, man. I reached over. And I cleaned it. <laughs> so, so, Mike, you want to? Uh, Want to do like two bars of four trade off or? No, I just want to take you down, man. <laughs> I don't do this trading off stuff. What are you talking about, this guy? Well, why do I? I don't know. What do you got? Uh, I, how about yeah? How about uh? Or do you just want to play a? Uh, see, we really work. Just this reform. Out. Just do it. Over here.
Little name that tune. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you give me you, one. You name this. Okay. Uh, I'll pull in the rain. That's an awesome one. Right. That's a great one. One of Bonham's greatest. I'll give you another one, all right? Okay. These are the only two I thought of. I thought we <laughs> might do this. So. Are you ready? Uh huh. Rosanna. Out the swing down. He's got that shuffle swing down. That's uh, Je- Jeff Picaro. Jeff Picaro. I just covered a Jeff Picaro tune. I just did a cover of Lido Shuffle. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. Boz Skaggs. I didn't yeah, know yeah. that was Jeff That's Picaro. Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. You got that shuffle down, though. That's pretty good, man. I love that ghosted note in give there. Me, give me some rush. Some, you got some Neil? Uh, yeah, but I mean, you I said you knew natural science. <laughs> I know this part. Whoa! You remember that, Lick? Yeah, yeah, of course. I love that one. That's great. I'm sorry. What is that? The text request for honor thy father. Honor thy father. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's one of mine. I don't know. I don't. Um, I tell you what. How about this? Uh, I forgot how it goes. Something like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Can you do uh, the intro to Paradigm Shift? Paradigm Shift. Uh, God. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. How about this one? All right. Nice. That's one of yours as well, right? Yeah. What song is that? Can we Six use o'clock. we use that as a as a bed and I'm Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. Yeah, That's we use we, we use a lot of your stuff uh, coming in and out of songs. Oh cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, for free. For free, yeah, yeah for, free. for free, and uh, those songs are great for, for disc jockeys because they're so long. They give those are great for bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was always impressed do... with Wipeout. I always thought that was pretty hard to play. There's a video. You have you ever seen uh, the drummer at the wrong gig? No. Huh? You never saw the drummer at the wrong gig? What is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, eight million hits or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that guy, the, the, guy... the wedding guy. Oh, the wedding yes. guy. Yeah, yeah, doing all the, the stick tricks. Yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. video of me and him doing Wipeout together on YouTube somewhere. Oh, that's great. We did a drum, drum, we did a drum festival together a couple of years ago. and uh, The guy's doing all the gestures and flipping the things yeah, around. Yeah, and he's, totally. he's at a wedding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did this drum show, and he played Wipeout, and then I came up and like took over the kid. We were playing together. It was fun, man. That, that, guy, is, that cool. guy is awesome. Is he, he is good? good? Yeah. You know what? That oh, that yeah. thing got kind of passed passed around as a joke, but being a drummer, because he's he's playing sharp dressed man, it's a very simple rhythm. But everything he's doing around that and still able to play oh, that yeah. simple rhythm is really hard. Oh, to his do. time is impeccable. Yeah. yeah, with all the tricks, he doesn't miss a beat. He's he's amazing, and he's oh look, there's a uh, on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah sh- that's him in my dressing room, uh, showing me some of the tricks. Okay, uh, that's on my practice bed kit when I was out with Avenged Sevenfold. There he is. That's, awesome. that, that's that <laughs> move where it looks like he's getting attacked by killer bees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, if you, you're not familiar with what he's talking I, about, it, the, the guy's just gesticulating wildly but still managing to play the song. He was showing my, my son some uh, some cool drum tricks. Who is running the video? That, that's right amazing that they pulled that's that right up yeah, so quickly. There you go. Room, yeah. Awesome, dude. <laughs> wow. All right, could, can we do one more little back and forth? Yeah, man. All right, so uh, here's what I want to do, because I semi had a, a, a little bit of a plan of what I might want to do. Then proceed. Uh, Mike seems very uh, he's an amenable. Awesome guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm dying over here. But, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, I was going to play two bars of four and then you play two bars of four, and we'll just kind of solo back and forth. Okay. And then maybe meet up for a, a rhythm in the middle or something like yeah, that. Have a donut and a yeah. smoke. There you go. <laughs> donut and a smoke. All
off the desk. <laughs> thank you, my brother. You are so the man, man. Oh, thank you. He's giving me a stick. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Thanks, brother. Oh, my God, I got to change my underpants. <laughs> I need a hug from this guy. <laughs> You're the man. It was Very impossible cool. not to smile during that entire yeah. thing. That, just that, was, that was incredible. That, well, that was awesome. High five, dude. That was yeah. phenomenal. Job, awesome. That is awesome. Cool, so, so cool. Wow. And what, I see what, what, what you, you say, Mike, about and what you guys say about the camaraderie between drummers. You, you know, I, I have a feeling you'd find that less amongst... Well, no, it's only there. because I, I schooled him. If, if he did... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you kicked his ass. So that, no, what do you think? He's pretty he's awesome. Good, right? yeah. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, yeah he yeah. beats himself up, but he does a good job. Now I get, you know, listen. First of all, I'm blown away right now. I could cry right now. <laughs> no, Come I'm not, on, do I'm, it, do I'm, it. I'm, I'm not going to go that far. But I mean, it's really go back, Mike, to when you were a kid and the thought of being able to sit down with with one of your idols, one of your heroes, and play with them. That's what I feel right now. So I did, you know, I did cool. have that experience, and it it completely. I was so intimidated. I, I got uh, I got a chance to play with Bill Bruford you know, oh, 20 years ago. Legendary. I yes. mean, through the years now, I've, I've gotten to play with Terry Bozio and all these guys, you know, recently. But I'm like 20 years ago yeah. before I was, you know, really. Before you made a name for yourself. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and me and Bill got to jam together. And I, I was just so intimidated. I mean, I was scared. Asless. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so and Bill's, Bill's a gentleman, isn't yes, he? Yes. Totally, totally. Yeah. But he still schooled me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, wow. I, got a, I got an email from a guy that worked down in Philadelphia Insurance Companies on the third floor, and he's like, I can hear you guys on the third <laughs> floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Sorry about that. Oh, that will man. brighten their day. We were actually, that. when they were testing out the drum kits, and obviously these studios are supposed to be soundproof, but. Our uh, afternoon guy Jackson was on the air, and uh, the it was going through, going on air through the walls. So it, they, you, you, there's some volume. Let's get suckers. ready to rumble! <laughs> yeah. Very Man. cool. All right, so this is uh, the show coming up is going to be uh, on the 12th and in New York. Just Monday. a hop, skip, and a jump up the road. Yeah, Dude. come on out, man. Yeah. It's a, it's we're, we're it's just a party. We're going to celebrate the album's release and play the whole thing from is top this to bottom. Start a tour or uh, this is a one off, and then the U.S. tour will start in May. Okay, all right, that'll be cool, man. Yeah. And you, do you think you might do a gig in uh, Philly area? Or uh, I'm sure. See where it all I, goes? I would think so. I would think so. Just okay. walk out your front door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be rehearsing in 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 my uh, basement for that over the weekend, so you guys might be able to hear us from there <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, can, can Preston come out? For that? <laughs> well, well, listen. I, I was going to say, you know, now that we've jammed, I, I think we're kind of buds. Now, yeah. right, so. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna uh, dose me and spice me. <laughs> up. Okay, he's gonna come out. He was just saying how he's that guy that can come up and finish the gig. <laughs> yes. He's He's going to come out Monday. He's going to put something in my drink. Uh, yeah. And he's going to pull uh, you know, the Keith Moon story. He's going to the guy where uh, there's a story where Keith Moon passed out on an elephant tranquilizer halfway through the show. <laughs> yep. And they pulled somebody out of the audience to finish the show. So yeah, because they wanted to get paid, man. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten their gig money. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. If he comes over, don't eat or drink anything. Yeah, yeah. Unless he has a cover <laughs> on it. Yeah. So, this is what I want to do. I want to take the 10th and 11th caller. I will give a pair of tickets to go and see Adrenaline Mob. Uh, New York is the Hero Ballroom. And that is on the 12th. That's Monday, right? Monday, yeah. yeah. Monday night. So uh, be prepared. 215-263-WNMR. Uh, that is the number. There's a lot of people here that, that want to meet you, Mike, if you don't mind. Uh, I see. People. You see how full so you people. always have the You always have this many people we, here? We actually uh, we, uh, always invite a live audience in. Yeah, That's really do. cool. There, there are a number of Mike, Mike uh, Portnoy fans here today. That's yeah. really cool. There were some people who were just lucky enough to, they, they were already coming, and then other people who found out that you were going to be here. And asked that you could be here. My uh, my neighbor Russ is here. Uh, he's a huge fan, so I hey, let him in here. You know, <laughs> we go way back. Uh, way way back. <laughs> but we, you know what? On the um, back end of you these spots, that, um, dream Russ. we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play a yeah. song from. We're, we're gonna play a song called "Indifferent" uh, from Adrenaline Mob. Anything you want to set up about that song in particular? Or I know it's the first uh, release. First you guys single. Come with. Uh, we're shooting a video for it next week, so that'll be coming out, I guess, within the coming weeks and stuff. But uh, just a taste of what the mob is about. It's it's slamming riffs and. Grooves and uh, you know hooky melodies and what can I say? It's, cool. a, it's, a, it's an album I'm real excited about and uh, from top to bottom it's a strong album. I can't wait for people to hear it. Excellent man, uh, Mike's been an honor. Thank Thanks, you, Mike. man. Thank you. Thanks you for here. having me, Mike Portnoy. Yeah. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR.